and welcome to Let's Fly VFR. Today I'm going to take you through the settings to get the very most, most out of your system in X-Plane 11. Let's get those FPS in the right place. Welcome to Let's Fly VFR. All in X-Plane 11. Props, jets and much more. All done in real world weather. Let's make it as real as possible every fly. Subscribe, like and leave me a comment. Look forward to hearing from you. And the first step we've got to do is have a look at our system requirements. Now for X-Plane 11 there's a set of minimum and there's recommended. Now minimum is fairly low. Uh, down at i3s, i5s, that's fine, 3.5 gig. Um, RAM 8 gig, Windows 7, 8 or 10 and a 1 gigabyte video card which is probably the big one. When I first started I played on a 760, GTX 760 and that had 2 gig and it was and it ran okay but it was just limited by uh, how much of a texture you could put onto the sim, how good a quality you could make it. The second part is the recommended settings. Now you're looking at a 3.5 gig processor or better they do recommend the i5 6600K, the K being overclockable, or you can have an AMD equivalent, which is what I have in here. I have an 8350 at 4.3 gig. Now it does recommend 16 to 24 gig. So far, I haven't found any reason to go really beyond eight. Um, if you're doing something in airliners that has a lot more textures, um, it's likely that you uh, might need some more in that situation, but. I think even system running, although I have 20 gig in here at the moment, uh, I check it pretty regularly and I don't really see it getting much higher than that. So if you only have eight, you're still gonna have a good experience. Now, video cards. Video cards is something, uh, you know, I see a lot of guys playing, and girls, playing on um, laptops. So you're gonna be quite limited, but that doesn't mean you can't get a good gaming experience out of it. It won't be graphically as pretty, but you can still do it. You can still do it. And I see a lot of people out there doing it. And uh, uh, David on the, I think it's Explain for Beginners. <laughs> Dave talks, he's the, the guy who runs it. Uh, he only talks about getting seven FPS. So uh, that's pretty frightening. So anyway, we're going to help you get, try and do a little bit better than that, providing you have something you can actually do it. Right. Now, let me talk quickly about my system. Okay. Just so you know where we're starting from, because we're going to be working with this system in a moment. So 8350, old CPU, uh, ASRock uh, Extreme 3, 990FX Extreme 3 uh, motherboard, and say 20 gig of DDR3. It's not the great DDR3, but it's there. So we've got that, and we've got the GTX 1050 Ti. Now, these are pretty good. It's a four gig card, works very well, and you'll see from the numbers we get, very, very playable. But at the end of the day, you really need, if you want to do VR, you need to go to the 1060. And um, if you go beyond that, it's diminishing returns, really. Um, I've watched a couple of videos, and uh, Michael from X-Force PC, who seems closely, closely linked with X-Plane 11, has done some benchmarking. Maybe I'll link that up here for you, and you can have a look at that. But as you'll see there, 1060 turns out pretty good in medium settings, as he would normally send out a system from his, uh, his business. Um, works well, and you're getting uh, 40s to 60 FPS. Um, if you're going up to, and that's at 1080p, and if you're going up higher, then um, look, they all struggle once you're trying to hit uh, 4K and things like that. So. Um, it's going to be difficult to do that. But if you're playing 1080p, as most do, then you're going to get a good experience. So Now let's have a look at the process of resetting or reloading uh, your game after, a, um, after you've made some changes. So what's important, let's go through the, the slider settings, and I'll have those here behind me, and hopefully you can see them. So the sliders on the left, the three are the graphical sliders, and they're down to your GPU. So how good your GPU is is going to be what's uh, going to govern how far you can move those along. On the right hand side, which is the CPU with the two sliders, again, uh, objects, um, you can only push that up depending on how good your GPU is. So um, for me, in the system I have, really in the middle is, is, is about best. I can push it right up on the, on the lower settings. And something else to consider here is your, again, back to your resolution. 
I like to run the DSR, so I run the DSR at 2K, yet my monitor is not quite a 1080p, it is an oldie, um, it's refresh rate, it's okay, but yeah, so I like to run the 2K. It seems to give you a finer view of, uh, of the picture, but in some cases I think maybe it does take some of the color out of it as well, so there's a balance to be made there. So let's have a look at that towards the end of the video, and now let's step in and start the sim and put everything down to zero put it down to the lowest possible settings and get a base mark see where we start from and then we'll work from there okay so now you can see where we are we have dropped the settings down to the very minimum uh, we've turned the shadows off as well which is something that's also important the shadows do take up a lot more extra processing so i do recommend you turn those off initially and then later on if you have some fps space Turn them on and see how you go, along with the amount of aircraft on the ground. Um, that's on the left hand side of the box below the sliders there on your GPU side. So now that we've got them at zero, let's step into the sim and let's see what frame rates I have on my system. You can see there on the top left hand corner. Now if you're not sure how to get the, the output there, if you go back to your settings, it's in the data output, it's the very top left hand box. Just click that and you'll end up with those uh, FPS settings sitting on the top of your screen. So you can see what my settings currently are at the base level. And it looks pretty bland, doesn't it? The ground's pretty bland. The, uh, there's no buildings around with not even a, a small airport. So let's go back and let's push up the settings a little and then see what that effect that has to the overall FPS level. Okay, let's push these sliders up a little and uh, the biggest one for me is the texture. Getting the textures up, that middle slider, getting that up as far as you can is best. As you can see, each time we move the sliders upward, the FPS is coming down slowly. So um, you get to a point where you have to decide yourself, uh, is that enough FPS for me and is the playing experience what I want? So that very much is just up to you. It's a personal preference, and uh, I really don't understand when I see people posting, oh, I've got this system, that system, what should I get? It's very personal depending on what sort of level of graphics. If you want everything maxed out and put it at 4K, you're probably gonna see two FPS on a lot of systems. If you're gonna do it at uh, 1080p, and you're gonna have it maxed out, and you've got a good system, you're probably still gonna see uh, 40 to 50 FPS if you're really lucky. Um, if you haven't got a stronger system and you have the same high settings and you're probably looking at 20, 25 and then when you introduce some cloud then that'll knock itself uh, right backwards as well. My system can run really well and then when the cloud comes up, because I do run uh, world weather all, all the time, um, then the clouds uh, appear and then the FPS drops. So you have to allow for that too when you're planning. So if you think, well, 25 works for me, and it should really, then if you have it in clear weather and you're getting 35, something like that, then once the weather induces itself and you get some cloud layers and things happening and it drops back to 25 or so, you're still gonna get a reasonably good experience. And that's the wonderful thing about uh, X-Plane 11 at a low FPS level like that, you still can get a really good ex experience. So it's all about that. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been helpful. Uh, if you've got any questions, please comment below. Uh, happy to hear from you would be really great. And if you've got any ideas or you've got any tips of your own, drop them in that comments and uh, we will put them in maybe in another video. So until next time, thanks for joining me here at Let's Fly VFR. Welcome to Let's Fly VFR. Bye. Subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. Look forward to hearing from you.